Yo, what's going on guys? I'm going to show you, you can make a energy drops system. Now, it's not going to be one with actual like equipment and things like that. It'll be like cash uh, because you will need an inventory for the other one. And this is not a tutorial on that. But yeah, so for example, we hit the enemy. And this does have a simple combat system just to test it. Hit the enemy, get credit. So as long as you hit the enemy once, uh, you will get credit, and both people get the, the rewards. And you know this is the simplest way you can do it. Uh, you can change the logic to have it like you need a certain percent of damage or something like that. But this is a just a simple one. So you know you just need a hit for credit. So yeah, let me get into that. As usual, you can get this in the description. If you, this is quite simple. So what you will need first off is, this was originally going to be for inventory, but I'll make a separate one on that. So I turn this into a, let me actually just rename this to, to main. So in the main, we just do a couple simple things. So we need the replicate storage for the remotes. Uh, actually, we don't need that in this one. So you can just take that out. We just do the, the, the classic game no players play added connect function player. And then we just do the same thing for the character. And add this here so you wait until the character is actually loaded before adding these things. So we just create a leader stats. And if you do the lowercase l here for the name, that's how you make it show in the top right. If you don't want that, you can just change this to an uppercase l. And for the cache, we just make a number value. You can also do an in value, but number values can use decimals. So I'm gonna use a number value. And then we don't need that. I'll make a separate one on that. So yeah, very simple just to get the cash value. This doesn't have a data store, but I've done many, many videos on that. So you can just look at like, I think the previous one before this had a, a data store. So yeah, next thing you need is the inputs. So I'm gonna change this to input handler actually. And here we need user input service and replicate storage. Replicate the storage to fire to the server for the combat and yeah, we could take this out. That would be for step one. So we could just do simple. Uh, yeah, we don't need you either. So yeah, we need player and then character. You want to do character added weight. This is very important. Uh, if you don't do this, it can break sometimes. Then user input service input began connect function input comma GP. So GP is if you're typing basically, then it will return end so it won't fire. And input is the actual input you want to to have. So mouse button one. You can change this to whatever you want. This is just a combat, it's not exactly a tutorial on that. But in here we're just gonna fire through the remote uh, that we have in replicated storage, right here. Combat re remote and enemy, I don't think the enemy drops one is used. That was gonna be for the inventory, so you can just take that out. But yeah, the combat one. So you just fire through M1. Then into the combat, just very simple combat. So we'll have replicated storage and debris. Then for the remote, we do on server event connect function, player and message. Player is the first thing that always gets sent through from the client and message is the M1 that we sent through. So then yeah, the character, we need the character. If the message is M1, and the reason I did it like this is in case you wanna add like M2s, you know, this isn't a sort of the combat, but if you want, you can do this and you can have M2s, feints, whatever you want. But in here, we will create a hitbox, which is just a clone of the hitbox inside of it. Uh, make sure it's anchored and can collide it off. And we just set the C-frame of it equal to the character's humanoid root part, times C-frame.new minus two on the Z-axis. So it moves forward a bit. And we do the breed to add it for 0.25 seconds. Then this is a table to store the people who have been hit. And then we just do hitbox.touch, so when it's, the hitbox is touched, it will fire a function, and hit is the thing that's touched the hitbox. So we check if hit and, so if hit, so if it did hit something, and the hit.parent is not equal to the character. So if you want the thing that got hit, then you have the enemy character, enemy humanoid, humanoid root part, the, that stuff. And we check if the, there is an enemy humanoid and the humanoid's health is more than zero, so you don't hit something that's already dead. Then 
will check if you're not inside of the table, which means you haven't been already hit by that hitbox. Then you'll get added to the table, so you can't be hit again by the same hitbox. And then you will just take damage, change this to whatever you want. And this here is how you do the drop rewards. So you just set the attribute for the enemy character to the player's name and then true. I'll show you where we use this in a second. And final thing is the script inside of the enemies. So you can just rename this like drop rewards. Open it up. In here, a couple things. So players, so we can loop through the players. Humanoid is going to be uh, to check if the humanoid has died. So we're just going to fire this when a humanoid dies. So when the, the character or the enemy dies, we will just check through its attributes to see who has actually hit the, uh, the enemy. And then we will just reward all of those players. It's quite simple. So when you do the humanoid.died, which is just the function for every humanoid, so you can check if it's died. Then we will loop through the players in the, uh, no, we loop through the attributes first. Yep. I don't think we even loop through the players. You know, we loop through the attributes and it's done like this. So player name is because what we sent through is, uh, where is it? It's going to be the player's name. That's the first thing that we're sending through. And then true would be just not needed. So just ignore the true. So how this works, it would loop through the attributes. Player name would be equal to the name of the attribute and the underscore would be equal to the value of that attribute, so true. We're just gonna loop to find the player name and everyone who's uh, got the attribute as, with their name in it, uh, in the character, then they would get the rewards. So we'll loop through there and we'll do script apparent get attributes. So this will just get every attribute inside of the enemy then the player would be equal to the players, five first child, player's name. So it would loop through the players. Well, it wouldn't loop, but it would just look through the player's service until it finds you. If there is a player, then you get the leader stats. If the leader stats is there as well, then you get the cash. If there's cash and the cash is another value, you know, a lot of checks. So you don't really need to have this many checks for something this simple, but it's good to have. So. If you have these, then it will increase the cash by a point uh, by five, and it'll print, you know, just this. You got more money. This was mainly used for testing it, just to make sure everything was working properly. But you don't need to have this. So yeah, that's everything actually. Play around with it yourself.